All right, we tested over 60 different dutastride delivery vehicles for maximizing regrowth and minimizing systemic absorption into the bloodstream. I think the results of this study will really excite you. For years, scientists have been trying to make topical dutastride to actually deliver dutastride to where you want it most, which is the base of the hair follicle, while limiting the systemic absorption into the bloodstream, which has been known to cause side effects. Unfortunately, nobody had ever conducted a broad-based study comparing dutastride delivery vehicles to each other in an apples-to-apples -apples way so you could actually know which dutastride delivery vehicle performed the best. Until now. Over the last two years, my team and I have been working in collaboration with Professor Tice Grattieri at the University of Brasilia to answer one question. What is the best way to deliver topical dutastride safely and effectively in order to stimulate hair regrowth? Hi, my name is Andrew. I am the co-founder of Antigen and HairDAO. We are a global community of patients, researchers, and scientists passionate about finding a cure to hair loss. Our goal was simple, deliver dutastride deep enough in the hair follicle so that it gets to the dermal papilla where DHT binds and miniaturizes the hair follicles. The problem is that they either don't get through the top layer of the skin or so much gets through the skin and into the bloodstream that you can get the same side effects from the topical dosage as you would from just taking the oral pill. Because dutastride is a large and lipophilic molecule, sometimes it's too large to actually penetrate through the top layer of the skin, and its lipophilicity, which means it loves fat, can mean that it binds to the surface layer of the skin without ever going any deeper. Other vehicles increase the absorption and penetration while using high concentrations of topical dutastride so much that it flushes right through that top layer of the skin, goes into the bloodstream, and causes those same side effects as you get with the pill. In our broad-based comparative study, the formulation we eventually settled on stood out from the rest. It delivered about two to three times as much dutastride to the follicular shaft as the available competitive peer set. And that includes many of the topical, very hyped up liposomal vehicles that we typically would see on the market. Impressively, the vehicle we chose also limited the amount of dutastride that got into the viable skin, which is where a lot of the vasculature exists, which would absorb that dutastride into the bloodstream. The key metric which we obsessed about throughout this whole study was follicular targeting factor. So what exactly do we mean by follicular targeting factor and why is it so important? The follicular targeting factor is a measurement of how much of the dutastride gets to the hair follicle versus the rest of the skin. It's a great measurement to measure the specificity of our delivery vehicle. So put simply, follicular targeting factor equals amount of dutastride recovered in the follicular shaft divided by the total amount of dutastride recovered in all of the skin. For every delivery vehicle tested, we measured follicular targeting factor at 12 and 24 hours, timeframes which allow us to see absorption after a shorter period of time and how the drug will act after a longer period of time, mimicking the time in between dosages. We studied delivery in three main compartments of the skin. One, the stratum corneum, or the very top layer of the skin. Two, the viable skin, which is sort of everything beneath the stratum corneum. And three, the hair follicle itself. Think of our dutastride delivery vehicle like delivering a package. You can have the right building, but unless you also have the right apartment number, the package is not going to get to its correct recipient. So again, if the follicular targeting factors are always between zero and one, the higher the number or the closer to one, the more effective and targeted it means that delivery vehicle is. Okay, so for the next topic, why pig skin? Why did we use pig skin and not human skin? So interestingly, Porcine ear skin, also known as pig's ear, is actually one of the best practical surrogates for human scalp skin in studies. Anatomically, they're both incredibly close matches. They have similar stratum corneum, thickness, follicular size, and lipid structures. Human scalp skin, when removed from the scalp for testing, actually loses its tension and changes shape. Pig's ear skin is scalded after collection and then can be stored frozen for up to a month before being studied. That maintains consistent permeability across studies. The follicular density, of the pig's ear skin give us stronger, more consistent data, and its flat shape makes it much easier to mount itself on a Franz diffusion cell, which is great for study reproducibility. And finally, in terms of ethics and access, pig's ear skin is readily available at scale and can be ethically sourced, inexpensive, and available in bulk. That means it's much easier for us to run large standardized studies across a breadth of delivery vehicles. Of course, it is still just a screening model and the results are not 100% predictive, so I would think of it much more like a flight simulator. You know, you fly a flight simulator, it gets you 95% 
90% of the way there, maybe 90%, but ultimately it's a different story when you get behind the helm of a real plane. Okay, so next up for the vehicle landscape. Here's where it gets really interesting. As previously mentioned, we tested the broadest range of delivery vehicles ever compared on an apples to apples basis. Everything was done under the same experimental conditions. So for the first time, you could actually compare do task ride delivery vehicles in a head to head manner. Typically you would have, you know, different standards, different vehicles, different endpoints. And so it was impossible to know for patients which do task ride delivery vehicle or which topical do task ride was going to perform the best. Here's just a snapshot of the delivery vehicles that we tested. I'm going to read them off because there's a ton. Basic PC liposomes with and without cholesterol, flexible liposomes, PEG liposomes, ethosomes, multilamellar liposomes, mineral oil and simple oil vehicles, nano emulsions, nanospheres and nanocapsules, PLGA and PLC nanoparticles, PLGA nanoparticles mixed with multilamellar liposomes, silica-based nanoparticles, including those from some companies you may or may not have heard of. We even reached out to several companies with topical dutastrides on the market, offering them free inclusion into this study because we truly wanted to compare as many different delivery vehicles against each other so we could know once and for all what the best performer was. Unfortunately, only one of those companies actually took us up on their offer, which is very sad, but we'd love to include them. This is for the patients. We want the patients to have maximum information. Outside of just the vehicles we mentioned, we also fine-tuned each one of those vehicles, tweaking the particle size, the surface charge, and the uniformity using prep methods like back bath sonification, probe sonication, and high shear mixing. It's the result of hundreds of experiments, thousands of hours in the lab, and over $260,000. But the results were strong enough that we ultimately thought it was a good idea to patent the results. And now, for the first time ever, this formulation is leaving the lab and going to antigen.xyz, where it can finally get into the hands of patients. We are opening early access to patients who sign up on our website, antigen.xyz, and we'd love for you to collect as much data for us out in the wild as possible. For years, dutastrite has been seen as the holy grail of hair loss treatments in terms of strength, but it's been held back and many people haven't wanted to take it because of the very real side effect risk profiles. Simultaneously, the topical dutastrides haven't offered a very good alternative as many of them either don't get through the top layer of the skin or cause those same side effects. So hopefully by engineering the right delivery system, we can influence where the dutastrite goes within our skin to ultimately have the desired outcome we would like. Next up, we need to measure systemic DHT in all patients who try the formulation. And of course, and probably most importantly, we need to measure target area hair counts over a period of time. It's very important that we are regrowing more hair. We want more hair follicles per square centimeter, and we want those hair follicles to get thicker as well. So with that said, thank you all for your support. And we will keep tinkering away, keep working as hard as it takes until we can turn a slick bald scalp fully hairy. We can't lose sight of that goal but this is a nice step along that path.